go out to the Atlantic 10 championship game. Xavier and Dayton have started. They're tied at 14. Dave Sims and Bob Wenzel with the call. All right, thank you, Reese. We welcome everybody who's joining us now here for the Atlantic 10 Tournament Championship. We've got a good one underway. It's the one seed, Xavier, in the West against the four seed in the West, the Dayton Flyers. He's Bob Wenzel. I'm Dave Sims. What a game. De Dayton trying to defend their tournament championship here tonight. Against a team that's won 12 out of the last 13 games. Xavier is hot. Lionel Chalmers is hot. This is going to be a great, great game, and we're seeing it already. Xavier's the ball club that knocked off St. Joseph's a couple of days ago to open this Atlantic 10 tournament. They were up by 37 points at one time <laughs> and wound up winning it by 20. This championship week presented by 7-Up continues from the University of Dayton Arena. We have got a packed house. They're ready to blow the roof off of this place. <laughs> This is one of the great rivalries in college basketball as Xavier and Dayton meet for the 137th time. And they don't like each other. They're about 68 miles from one another. Xavier in Cincinnati and Dayton just up the road. Similar teams in some ways. Point guard dominated. However, Wallacekowski, the leading rebounder in the league, number 45 in white, he is an inside force. Leading scores so far for Xavier Sato with four, Miles with four, as Finn goes over the top for three. Diedrich Finn, the sophomore from Newburgh, Indiana. 35 percenter gets a kick. Well, Finn started earlier in the year. They put him to the bench so he could come in and electrify with his offense, starting two freshmen, Cage and Dolman, instead. Thad Mata's tactic worked very well. Since that time, they've won 12 out of 13, including wins over Cincinnati and St. Joseph's. Dayton got here, holding on to beat Richmond last night in the semifinals. They go down low to Wallaskowski. Good pump fake, got a block. Here's Sato, all defensive Atlantic 10 performer again. He's the trailer here, fires a jumper straight on. Can't get it. Rebound to Cole, what do we got, a foul. And it looks like they're going to get Frankie Guadalla. Well, Cole has come in to give some energy at the post position. Miles went to the bench, and he's asserted himself early here at both ends of the floor. That foul was on Warren Williams, reaching in his second, team third. And Mark Jones is going to come back in, replacing Williams. And Sean Finn, here's a look at Anthony Miles, power forward, who came into tonight's game shooting 73% from the field. He had a bunch of layups and putbacks with that modest ball club as they raced to this championship game. And they've only trailed just for a few seconds earlier in this game, the first time all tournament. And Miles was two for two. Thad Mata successful at Butler, now successful here at Xavier, continuing the strong tradition at this school. They trail back at the 326 mark. Sato. Eight 20 win seasons in a row, Dave. Yeah. For the Musketeers. Here's Ramad Marshall. He's the point man for Dayton. Outstanding player in this tournament a year ago. Put it up. He's been struggling mightily from the field. Finn back the other way. Xavier leading by three. Dolman. Dolman showing just what we talked about. He's going to be a monster when he puts it on the floor. Exactly. Only a freshman about 210. He'll be 230 next year, I guarantee you. He is going to be tough to handle. Finn very active out front. Jones will pull up. Can't get it. They battle for the rebound, and Bennett comes down with it for Dayton. Dayton down by five. Dave, they like the half-court five-on-five, pounded inside variety. Finn over his left shoulder is his game. John Puck, that's why he's the field goal percentage career leader here at Dayton. And the field goal percentage leader in the Atlantic 10, 68% from the field. He only takes good ones. He's got eight points. Come a long way during his career. Sato way outside. Finn shooting with confidence. Back rim, no good. Marshall rebounds. So far, this game is what we expected. Dayton tried to pound it inside. Xavier wants to run. Brandon Cole thought he had a tip ball his first. Thad Mata. Didn't like that call. Here's how this tournament is shaped up. Xavier got here by knocking off St. Joseph's and then handled GW last night pretty easily. Dayton had an absolute battle with Richmond last night. Richmond making a case for itself 
the uh, inside of RPI 40 straight to schedule a 16 that they should be included in the NCAA tournament tomorrow night. And they've got a valued argument. The thing to keep in mind about this tournament, Xavier, this is their fourth game in four days because they did not get a bye. Dayton won the West. They got a bye. This is only their third game. Big difference. Bennett gets it over to Warren Williams, playing with two fouls. Warren shoots over the top. Oh, boy, shades of Jimmy V's national championship game. Warren Derek Williams is going to claim that's a pass, but it was a shot. I know somewhere Derek Wittenberg's going, wait a minute, that's my <laughs> game. <laughs> Derek now the head coach of the Fordham Rams here in the Atlantic 10. Very physical inside on cutters. Flyer foul on number 54, Sean Finn. First foul on Sean Finn will take a timeout. 7.42 to go here in the A-10 Tournament Championship. Xavier by one. Presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up. And your local 7-Up Bottler makes 7-Up yours. Can't find a seat here at UD Arena. 8-10 championship on the line. Championship week presented by 7-Up continues. Adrian leads by one. And let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast crew, Dave Ryan. Rhino. All right, Dave, thanks so much. Xavier's Romain Zato first came to the United States from his native Africa five years ago, knowing exactly one English phrase. It was, good morning, how are you? I'm fine. That was it. He spoke five other languages fluently, including French, but almost no English. His host family here in Dayton had all two days to get him ready for his first day of high school. So... They pinned three by five index cards all around the house with large definitions written in Sharpie, including the ceiling, to try to get him to learn as much English terminology as possible. And guys, it worked out very well for him. He's set to graduate with a degree in international business this spring. He told us last night his hardest language to learn of the six, English. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> He's probably not alone. Said it once, said it before, I defy any American to go do what he did. <laughs> I'll tell you what, unique kid, and we've got to know him this year, having done a number of their games. Fine individual and a terrific player. We could see him in the U.N. at some point down the road. 7.25 to go. A special get well and hello to Joe DeMeo, one of the fine referees in our game. He was scheduled to work tonight's game. Joe's a veteran official out of the Philadelphia area, and he had an auto accident coming back from the MAC championship game the other night. 2-1, Sato fires, can't get it, air ball. Shot clock violation. Enjoy all the best, and I'm glad to hear the operation went well and speedy recovery to Joe DeMeo. Glad you could join us, everybody. Championship week presented by 7-Up, continuing from the Atlantic 10, the tournament championship, defending tournament champions, the Dayton Flyers. They're playing host to the Xavier Musketeers, and Xavier leading by one. Xavier has just ripped their way through this tournament. The first three days, this is game four for the Musketeers. Both of these teams in the NCAA last year. Dayton was 24 and six. Xavier 26 and six. Ooh, that's how much Marshall has been struggling. Shot an air ball, and that's a shot he generally hits. Chalmers with a change of pace. Tip Miles, no good. They keep it alive, and Jones breaks out of the pack. Xavier choosing to play mix-up between zone and man-to-man. -man. They're alternating to try to slow the offense down. Dayton does not mind playing five-on-five five in the half court. Marshall ended up on the floor. Bennett's got to put it up. Not a good shot. Kept alive by Chalmers. Finn comes out. A foul on Dayton. And that's how value Mr. Chalm valued it. Mr. Chalmers is. Championship week presented by 7-Up showcases two more conference championship games tonight on ESPN2. The MAC championship is at 7 Eastern featuring Kent State and Western Michigan. Then at 9 Eastern, the WAC championship pits UTEP against Nevada. Championship week presented by 7-Up on ESPN and ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Five team fouls for Dayton, two for Xavier at this stage, the 5.55 mark first half. These teams know each other so well. Practice this afternoon going over the specific plays that they're one another is going to run, and they've defended very, very well so far, both teams in this game. The positive effect of the two big people, Wallaskowski and Finn, negating Miles down low. Dayton trying to take the lead on this possession. Wallaskowski. Finn was shaped up nicely, and then he threw it away right to Dolman. Turnover number five. 
Doman can't get it. Miles tries to save. No service checking again with Dave Ryan. Well, Dave, Bob just mentioned Dayton players consider Xavier their arch rival. Cincinnati is only an hour away, and over the summer, several Flyers compete in the Devereaux Summer League in Cincy. The Musketeers have players who play in that league as well. It's very competitive, and rosters are mixed. So some Flyers and some Xavier players are on the same Summer League team. They're friends off the court, guys, but tonight it's all about winning the league championship. Also players from Miami, Ohio, and Cincinnati compete in that very good league. And That's Dave, you're going to coach in that league next <laughs> summer, from what I understand. Say, well, some of this talent, you get, it, you get your shared W's. Here's a tip. I think Frank Iguodala got it. He's their energy guy. Frank knocked it in, and Dayton takes the lead. Third lead change this evening. Dayton by one. Dayton trying to dominate in the paint where they have advantage. These basketball fans here at Dayton, they know their game. Sean Finn and Wallace Kowski, very formidable in close. And Miles finally gets another touch. How about Miles? Just murdering people down low. It's three for four. Jonesy goes in. No, and a foul on Xavier. Boy, and if you can get a look at Sean Miller, the assistant coach on the Xavier bench, something really, something happened he didn't like. And I don't think it had anything to do with the refereeing. It was about the coverage defensively. Well, he, Outstanding player at Pittsburgh. No doubt about that. Great guard. He was not happy the way with his team got back defensively right there. Jones looking to finally get the ball through the basket. He is 0 for 4 from the field, 0 for 2 from three-point range, and now has missed the free throw. He does have three assists and two boards. Thad Mata talked to me at practice today, Dave, a little bit about, I asked him, you know, can you win four games in four days? Mm -hmm. And he says, they're just so juiced up, they don't even worry about that right now. <laughs> it's not a thing they're focusing on. Yeah. He told me earlier in the year, once you start talking about three or four games down the road and those kind of things, his players are not good at that. They want to focus on what's right in front of them. That's the Atlantic 10 championship. They've done a good job. Remember, we were, we've were we seen this both of these clubs quite often. At one point, Xavier was 10-9. and nine. And their turnaround happened when they knocked off Cincinnati at the Cinta Center. And Cincinnati Center won 12 out of 13. And they did it by injecting two freshmen in the lineup, Dolman and Cage. Diedrich Finn has now come off the bench, and that's been a very, very sound tactical move. Chalmers missed to set up this possession for Dayton. Warren Williams will fire a three. And hit. Warren Williams, 40% for three-point range. Dayton back on top. He's their most accurate, not their most frequent as a substitute guard, but a weapon for sure. Ryan Gregory's club digging in. Sized advantage right here for Sato. He should go inside against Jones. Dolman, finger roll, J.D. <laughs> Justin Dolman putting it on the floor the last couple of days. This is remarkable. Oh, and then Scott turned his head. Iguodala turned it over. Reggie Green with the official was open, but he's not playing. When we come back, a championship week update of beauty here in Dayton. Texas has a spot in the Big 12 championship game against Oklahoma State. They beat Kansas by four, Digger. I thought Kansas was going to blow them out, jumping out 15 to four, but Texas gets that halftime lead up two and gets the win by four. They were super the Cowboys in the regular season. Big East final is next. The big news, the big man is back for Connecticut, and Mecca Okafor will play with that tender back. But Charlie Villanueva, who filled in so well for him, will not play. He has an ankle injury. Pick your time coming up next, guys. Gentlemen, thank you. That'll be one heck of a game tonight, the third straight year that those clubs have gotten together for the title. Championship week, some notes. St. Joe's, Mississippi State. What do you think? I'll tell you what, a lot has been made about the first seed or the second seed. I don't think there's that much of a difference, to tell you the truth. There are about seven or eight teams, maybe even nine teams, who qualify and are pretty similar in terms of one and two seeds. The committee's going to try to keep those teams close to their home sites anyway. There's Cage outside, taking it in against Wallaskowski. Wow, and Maisie got the shot off Wallaskowski, the top rebounder in the A-10, brings it down. And they are the top rebounding team, a plus eight average on the season. Knocked away, Wallaskowski back to Miles. Seventh turnover by Dayton. Right now, Chalmers is on the bench. He has not played very well in this game. Fortunately for them, Diedrich Finn is a point guard who can handle and pass and run that spot as well. Wallaskowski took a blow. 
think he hurt his ankle. Miles powers through Finn for the bucket. I'll tell you what, Miles has done a great job before he catches the basketball, so when he catches it, he backs Finn right under. Even though Finn is a seven-footer, he can't block the shot because his head is under the rim. Eight points, four or five shooting for Miles. The senior out of Chicago. Marshall, check for Look at Sato. What a stop he just made on March. That was one of the plays they were going over in practice, Dave. Remember? They yeah. wanted to jump out on all of those screens. Sato wants the pressure. What, what a great job. Marshall, lefty, going left, scores. The proper response when you are pressured is to put it on the floor and go around people. Dayton, wise enough to get out of Ramad Marshall's way. He is a heady, heady player. He had a back problem. He was on fire earlier in this year, and he struggled a little bit recently, although he had 33 against Duquesne three games ago. He's not playing probably about 80% in my estimation. Seven ties, seven lead changes tonight. Coming up in a minute to go. Sato, no. Oh, what a good battle for the rebound. But a foul call. Frank Scagliata's got it. Don't forget, coming up on the 7-Up Halftime Report with Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps. A comeback for the ages indeed. The Big 12 Finals are set and other tickets get punched. I saw Oklahoma State, Texas a couple of weeks ago. What a game that was. I saw Kansas, Missouri uh, recently, and Kansas pretty good too. And today, Texas beat Kansas. So Oklahoma State, those teams all going, obviously. Chalmers back in. Cage will take a seat. But Sato struggling from deep. He's 0 for 6. They have challenged his three-point shots very well. Hand in the face every time. Mark has been an outstanding defender. But right now, they can go inside. Keep your eyes fixed on Miles inside and Finn. Finn, the much taller. He's got to do a little bit of work before Miles catches the ball. Here's Sato putting it on the floor again. Well, he's done that several times tonight. And they get a foul against Dayton. Brian Gregory upset right now, Dave, because he takes great pride in the man-to-man -man defense of Dayton. He does not like when guys use dribble penetration against him. And that time, Romain used his left hand to get in there. Incredible story with this guy, the assistant from Michigan State. Been to the Final Four twice, won one championship in 2001. Very good relating to his players, good technical guy. That foul is Bennett's second. Sato, normally a good free throw shooter, misses wide to the left. Sato third in the conference. Marshall just got it over. And what do we got, a foul? Oh, my goodness. What they were trying to do was call a timeout. He had five Mata is saying he called the timeout before the foul. Typically, in this situation, teams like to call timeouts. Sato, unfortunately, came after Marshall hard. This is going to incense Thad Mata. Right here, Marshall trying to call timeout. Sato went after him. He did not call it, but you can't tell by that picture. The coach is allowed to call a timeout from the sideline. And Gregory, it seemed, had called the timeout. Right. And when Jeff Clark went to the signal to the uh, scores table, it was signaling about the timeout. <laughs> and thought that having seen the contact. <laughs> he is not happy about that one. That could come back and hurt you later in the game. Championship week presented by 7-Up Rolls On tonight on ESPN at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's the Big East Championship, the third year in a row. Connecticut takes on Pittsburgh. Tonight's Big East Championship is also available on high-definition ESPN HD. Call your cable operator, DirecTV, or the Dish Network today. And at 10 Eastern, UNLV and Utah, they meet in the Mountain West Championship. Championship week presented by 7-Up on ESPN and ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Jamie Dixon, the first-year coach of Pittsburgh, doing a great, great job. Maybe the coach of the year. He was in that conference. That's right. And Sato's numbers, not what you would expect so far. Here's some pressure in the final 40 seconds plus. Xavier trying to go some zone here in the end game situation. There is a difference of eight seconds between shot clock and game clock. So if Xavier stops them on the possession, they will have an opportunity. Xavier in the three previous games here in the A-10 tournament, 53, 43, and 42 points at halftime, stuck at 25 here in a tie game. Marshall, not a slump like breaker, but Wallace Gowski there for the putback. They've got time. 
Here's Finn checking. Going baseline with three. Fade away. Tough shot. He hit it. Oh, oh, oh. Diedrich Finn ties it at 27. Talk about boys walking down, getting deep. He got so deep that that was a reasonable shot. The eighth tie of the ball game. Great poise on the part of Diedrich Finn. He fades, so he must shoot it higher, and he does it properly. Usually you hit front rim. He says, quiet down, you Dayton fans. <laughs> uh, right now, let's check in with Dave Ryan. Brian Gregory, Dayton head coach. Quickness and balance for Xavier was so tough for you to defend in the first half. What's the strategy in half number two along those lines? Well, you know, we, we did a pretty good job. I mean, they're doing a good job contesting shots, good job on the defensive glass. They scored a couple times in the post, which I'm a little disappointed in. Sean will do a better job in that in the second half. But Finn has come to play, Ramad's come to play. It's a heck of a game. It, it's going to be runs, and we got to have a little bigger run than they do. Speaking of running, Brian, do you expect Xavier to run out of gas in the second half? This is their fourth game in four nights, or will adrenaline carry them through? Well, they're 22 years old. They got to April and May to get tired. They'll be fine. And, and we'll be fine. It, it's going to be a great second half. One win each, Dave Sims, so far for these two teams ahead at third in the icebreakers tonight. All right, Rhino and BG, thank you very much. Xavier trailed for four minutes and 20 seconds this half. Let's get back to the studio. Dave, thank you. Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps. Welcome to our 7-Up Halftime Report. Yeah, X has led wire to wire in this tournament, but this is no coast job, and they're going to have to dig deep with four games in four days, I think, in the second half. Well, we saw what Chalmers and West did in the St. Joe game. They combined for 47 points in a game yes again. The GW was 44 points. Will those two guys run out of gas in the second half because they've been so high in getting those big points in the last two games? Well, these two teams battling already. It's been a good march for basketball in the state of Ohio in the Queen City this afternoon. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week, presented by 7UP, is brought to you by Lick and Mercury in the Think Big Sales event, and UPS, what can Brown do for you? Welcome back to the University of Dayton Arena. Championship Week presented by 7UP continues. We're at halftime in the A-10 Championship. Xavier and Dayton, along with Bob Wenzel, I'm Dave Sims. And what about this first half? Dead even at 27. The backcourt for Xavier struggled big time. But meanwhile, the backcourt for Dayton did a pretty good job. Well, Ramad Marshall did a great job on Chalmers. That was the thing that we were going to talk about. Chalmers only 1 for 6. Yep. Sato only 2 for 8. 0 for 6. The big guys have really got it done. Finn for Dayton, and of course Miles for Xavier. Inside, Finn was alone. He uses his seven feet very well, goes over his left shoulder almost every time he touches the ball. Ten points, very accurate, five for seven, got four boards also inside. So he has done a tremendous job as an offensive force in this game. Miles, on the other hand, has eight in the post for Xavier. So both centers playing very well in the game, and oddly enough, the guards not producing so far. Miles went four Four for five from the field, then five for seven. Chalmers one for six, Sato two for eight. Here we go, second half. Jones off the quick move, goes baseline. And Dayton's back on top by two. One statistical difference between these teams, Xavier forced seven turnovers by Dayton. Xavier only had one turnover in the first half. They're trying to get Sato inside. And he scores. Well, that's what you do. We just talked about how Sato was 0 for 6 from outside, 2 for 8. You establish your best player close to the basket early in the second half. Wise move by Thad Mata and his group. We've seen him attack the basket off the dribble about three, four times. That is Marshall. Shoots a dead ball. That, no. <laughs> that was a tough shot. He's on the run. Didn't come for to a two-foot stop, but he makes odd shots like that. Has a knack for doing it. Talk about Sato for a second. The fact that he's really intent tonight at getting it by dribble penetration yeah unusual for him usually he's a standstill shooter and a guy who posts up around the basket they i guess they feel he's got a physical advantage that time he used the left shoulder bennett stuck in there nicely picked up the foul sato second First half statistics, Bob, what jumps out at you? Well, the thing right here is that the game is even. The difference in field goal percentage is because of the turnovers. To get that many points, Xavier had more chances and opportunities to score. They did a better job rebounding, however, did the Flyers. Marshall with Bennett, Wallaskowski, Finn, and Jones on the floor right now for Dayton, Dolman, Miles, Chalmers, Gage, and Sato. Here's Finn 
Caught it much further out that oh, time. Yeah. Miles did a good job. That two zip codes over. Wallaskowski fade away. In and out. And a loose ball comes to Bennett, who resets with Marshall. Jones was wide open. Sato not near him. Marshall decides to run their stuff instead, trying to get it inside. Marshall taking a look at it up top. Down low to Finn. Shot clock dying as we get under two minutes ago. Finn forced his way in and put a foul on Miles. Talked about how Xavier had been so explosive in the first three games. Look at That's that. three-point shooting statistics, percent. not overall. 41% first three games. Tonight, abysmal. Three for 15. Sean Finn establishing himself inside again at the start of the second half. Not a good free-throw shooter. If he makes it, it'll be a big roar. Finn struggling mightily, 51-9 from the line. He's four out of 17 the last two games and change. Now, this reminds me a little bit in golf when a guy misses a putt and the crowd goes, ah, you know? If this was an away game, they'd be booing. <laughs> and, and then some. <laughs> Ooh, that one's wide right. Run down by Chalmers. Under, or two minutes in, rather. And 31-29, Dolman forcing the issue. They keep it alive, and there's a breakout for Dayton. Don't do this frequently. Wow. How about Marshall? Catch, shoot, bingo. Biggest lead for Dayton. Five for eight for Marshall. Which one of those guards was hot and which was yeah. cold? All right, Marshall couldn't buy one coming in. Try to go weak side. Marshall knocked it out of bounds. Marshall coming in had been shooting 25% the last two games. From three-point range, he was two for 16, 12%. In the last 10 games, 36%. I mean, he was worse the basket. <laughs> well, he's three for five from three-point range in this game. Feeling the juice. Chalmers working against Marshall. Checks with Thad Mata. Shot clock at 13. They've done a good job clamping down on both these two guards. Sato in traffic, in and out, rebound, Wallaskowski. Ahead to Bennett. They get it back to Bennett, not an outside threat. Bennett is a blend guy. Go to the boards, play solid defense, get the ball where it's supposed to go. Has sat on the end of the bench last year and has become a full-time starter with this group. Had some good stops last night in the Richmond game while Oskowski shapes up the foul line for two. Nice pass by Bennett as well. Oskowski wide open on that flash. Dayton fans rise to their feet. The lead is seven. Time out, Xavier. Bad Mata is upset. Well, let them roar here at Dayton. 36-29, the defending champions leading in the tournament championship game. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Will that be the case tonight on their home floor for the second year in a row? That's the question at hand. Dayton leads 36-29. Bob Wenzel, you won an 8-10 tournament championship at Rutgers 1989. How big was that? That was big time big. Came from 7-22 down. I'll tell you what, that was a lot of fun. All of these championships are a lot of fun. Let's check in with Dave Ryan. Damon speaking with the Xavier coaches at the half. They're very concerned defensively with stopping the Dayton big man Sean Finn and Keith Wallace-Kowski at 10 boards between them the first half. Musketeers need to keep those two off the boards and be a lot more physical. Offensively, Xavier wants to set screens to fee up Lionel Chalmers more for good looks. He was 1 of 6 from the floor in the first half, 1 of 4 threes, as Bob said. Three-pointers are so key in their first three wins here in the tournament tonight. Not a factor at all. And don't forget, Ramon Marshall, excellent defender. Dolman tees up a rain ball. No. Rebound, Marshall. Right now, Marshall is everywhere. At both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively, and on the boards. Jones went into no man's land. Turned around and went, uh-oh. Got bailed out by Sean Finn. And look who is guarding Marshall now, Sato. They realize Marshall's doing a lot of damage, so they put their best defender on him. Sato's going to try to stick with him. Easy rebound, Sean Finn. 
Sean Finn coming down with that board. That'll give him six on the night. Some guys who are seven feet don't use their length to their advantage. He's done a remarkably good job of that today. They go down deep to Finn. Boy, they might have passed too much that time. Jones got in, knocked away by Doman, recovered by Miles. Passed up a couple of shots. No doubt about it, Dave. Unselfish to a floor right on that particular play. Gage sets up Miles with a good look. Wide right. And Wallaskowski brings it down. Bennett's not going to look to score on this, but he does enter as a passer. Knows where his teammates are. Trying to find Wallaskowski on the post here. They get it to Marshall with 18 on the shot clock. Second chance points, 10 points for Dayton. That was ugly. And Miles, now Cage comes away with it. Offensive rebounds, Dayton with seven, Xavier with four. But notice the white shirts getting back very well, not allowing a lot of penetration. Chalmers, they're going to take away the basket, say the foul was before. This is, I, it's, I'm very impressed with the way they have shut him down because he couldn't have been hotter these last three games. And I'll tell you what, I, I don't think he's being aggressive enough. Right here, this is the kind of thing you got to see from him. Thad Mata was cheering him like crazy as he went to the bench right here. He wants Chalmers to get more aggressive. He knows they're not going to win unless he does. That last foul was Marshall's second. We'll take a timeout here in Dayton. In New York, the big bad Pitt Panthers at 29 and 3. Stroll into the garden. They take on UConn for. Another Big East championship. I like the Huskies. They're on a roll. Ben Gordon knows it. Talik Brown knows it. They'll get it done. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the Panthers just to be different. Guys, back to you. The Panthers walking very confidently on West 33rd Street. Big East championship game coming up after our A-10 championship game. Dayton is on a little bit of a surge, Bob Wenzel. 36-29 as we update the star watch and Marshall with a big advantage. Well, that's the whole reason that they are on the surge that you spoke about. 13 points. Chalmers only three. Chalmers has to get much more aggressive offensively. Second time tonight. Sato goes to the bank. He likes that bank shot from the left-hand side out of bounds play well well executed but even though he's doing that Chalmers has to get into this game emotionally number zero in the blue he is the key guy to this team and as far as you're concerned he needs to attack more because he's been jump he's been hitting the jump shot that's been the key to his success in these three games so well, you got to guard him closely if he's hitting the jump shot then he can go around you after this timeout Xavier has gotten much more aggressive at the defensive end Marshall with six on the shot clock finds a gap goes glass and scores Point number 14 and 15. Keep in mind, two weeks ago, he had 33 at Duquesne. Capable of a big, big night. Yep. And also keep in mind, Dave, he was the MVP of this thing last year. Finn beat Williams easily, 38-35 now, Dayton. Bennett up top. Williams got a couple threes to his credit. Offensive foul. I think... Diedrich Finn sold that one very nicely. Solid Third moving foul. his feet, jumping in the lane. What you want to do. The timeout was very, very good for Xavier. Third foul on Warren Williams. Mark Jones will come back to pick him up. 38-33, Dayton on top of Xavier. Score was tied at 27 at halftime. John Gross is the man you'll see calling the signals with the big placard on the sideline for Xavier. In a building like this, you need visual signals. It's so loud. And Finn set up camp again and scored easily. Finn, with 12 points on 6 of 8 shooting, did a lot of damage early to start the game. The one shallow play coming up. Do you like that method of communication? Yes, I do, because it's so loud in here, you can't hear your point guard. Fingers can do it, too, the number one, two, three play. Although, if you have six plays, it's hard to do that when you're think, dribbling the ball. Oh, and I'm going to say he's going towards a basket as we check in with Dave Ryan. Dave, as you mentioned, that is John Gross, the Xavier assistant coach, holding up the signals on a dry erase board. They all represent different offensive sets depending on the matchup. Several signs are going to be used with up to 150 different offensive options. It started two years ago when players, as is the case tonight, were having trouble hearing the coaches. Really useful when Xavier is shooting away from its bench, as was the case in the first half. But now, guys, the players are so used to it, they're really more comfortable with the signs coming from the bench each half. 
All right, Rhino, thank you. 12.54 to go. That last foul is on Bennett, his third. Bennett now, Dave, Finley. Dave, 150 plays. You know, my guys could never remember more than four or five plays. 150, that's a lot of permutations. It sounds like all 154 are up for grabs for each game, too, as Sato goes to the line. And it's a good thing that uh, Sato now knows English. He's able to read those signs. <laughs> 40 to 35, Dayton. Yeah, that would be a little unfair, wouldn't it? <laughs> Two, three zone. The Musketeers trying to force an outside shot. Most likely guy, Marshall. He's feeling it. Tell you what. Oh, the attempt, no good. They keep it alive, but they got a foul as Sato went down. And we have seen some physical play last Sato. night and today. Sato's foul, his third. Watch this rebound situation on the weak side. He is there and a slap hard. Monty Scott, the guy on the floor, made the winning basket in their game last night. A two-point victory over Richmond. This young freshman made a little leaner on the left side of the lane. Great free throw shooter. Three team fouls, both clubs. As Monty Scott, 84% on the season out of, he's out of Reynoldsburg, Ohio. Sat out last year, academic reasons. They want him to be good. He's got a lot of talent. That three spot, right? The small yes, forward. Yes, indeed. Back rim, no good, Dolman brings it down. The only guy who was off this team was Brooks Sales from last year. He was the starting small forward. Four starters back for both of these groups from last year's NCAA tournament teams. Two big people making a big difference in this game. Dolman hanging in the air and he got fouled. I tell you what, he will be an absolute monster. You love this league. kid, man, really you must do. be his agent. I'm telling you. Because we sit, remember the first or second time we were in here, he's base, he was basically a stroker outside. That's right. But you could see his ability to get to the basket. He can put the ball on the floor at 6'9", Dave. When he gains strength, he's going to make those kind of shots that he just took. He also can take it all the way to the basket with you some bet. power. And I think the thing that he helps them with the most is that he's like a point forward on this no team. Question. He can handle and pass and Don get Nelson. the ball to the right place. Nelly would love it. Yeah, exactly. Don Guys who can do lots of different things. Good game tonight, too. 67% at the line on the season. Four-point ball game. Dad As was an Bowman. outstanding player at Northern Kentucky. Bowman's got nine. Wallace-Kowski and Finn's 15 rebounds. Xavier has 18 rebounds. That should have been a trap right there. Chalmers got mad at Dolman right there. They should have had a trap right at the 10-second line. I think the idea that Thad Mott is trying to do right now is press and then guard close to the basket with zone. Eight but give it an opportunity for a turnover in the backcourt by pressing. We're under eight minutes into this game now. A zone is effective when hands are up. When you're standing around, it's not effective. Marshall had to get rid of it with the shot clock dying. There's some handle that we were talking about right there. Chalmers steps into the shot. Back rim, though, that hit off the shot clock. Got a timeout. And when we come back, we're going to check out the upset of the week. Dayton leading by four. Champion Dayton leading 41-37. Let's check in on the upset of the week as we got started here in the Atlantic 10 tournament. Jameer Nelson, player of the year in the A-10, taking on Xavier and Chalmers and company. Got off to just a fabulous start. Essentially, this game was over in the first five minutes. They killed him, and the guys that killed him were the seniors. We see Dolman here, but Sada was great. Miles had 19, and of course, 24 and 23 for Chalmers and Sato. 20-point win as we check in with Dave Wright. Well, Dave and Bob, as you can imagine, St. Joe's a 27-0 record, number one team in the nation, the top seed here at the A-10. Everyone thought they'd be buying plenty of these St. Joe's hats and Jameer Nelson t-shirts, but a lot of them are going to go unsold. Now, Xavier coach Stad Mata said after his team beat St. Joe's a couple days ago, he could have heard a pin drop at the team dinner, so he quickly held a team meeting to refocus his group, and he said it worked like a charm. He said, guys, we haven't done a thing yet. We haven't proven anything to anyone. We've got to win this tournament to secure our bid to the NCAAs. Well, I'll tell you what, they proved something to me yeah. <laughs> when they beat the number one team in the country. That's good coach speak, I'll tell you. Chalmers right here, they're going after it, these Chalmers two. Chalmers with the bump. And... <laughs> I remind Marshall, he made him in flinch. <laughs> Impassive. But that's, you know, it's good by Chalmers, too. You know, I mean, he got after it, really. There's a little success in the his, first. They his, weren't behind. His fourth foul. Cincinnati also was beaten by the Xavier team. So I think their win last night certainly secured their bid. 
no problems in that area for them, although I thought Dayton needed to win last night and get to this game to secure their bid. They're 24 and 7. Both of these teams are going. Fourth team foul on Xavier, second on Chalmers. If that came up to me at the shoot around, I said, Are we in? And, I, and he was serious. I said, What are you kidding me? <laughs> Shot clock at five. Jones got to let it rip with two. Missed iron. Shot clock violation. Well, right there, the problem right now for, for Xavier is their playing zone, which was successful last night against DW, but it's not active. They're standing around. They have small guards. They're not a great team in terms of personnel to play zone. You want big, long players. Sato attacks. Sato goes glass. Got foul. Championship week presented by 7-Up rolls on tonight at ESPN. 8 Eastern, the Big East Championship, Connecticut and Pittsburgh. Tonight's Big East Championship game is also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator, DirecTV, or the Dish Network today. And attend Eastern, UNLV, and Utah meet in the Mountain West Championship. Dave, you are a gadget guy. Do you have a high-definition television set yet? Uh, it is uh, It is on the wish list. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if it's on the... I figured you'd have that by I now. I don't know if it's on the get list, but it's on the wish list. <laughs> Sato with a couple of free throws. Here's what I like. Full court pressure by Xavier. They're on a foreign court. they got to get something to get themselves excited and into the game. Exactly. Exactly. A lot of time left, of course, 10 minutes. But I think this kind of action will get Chalmers better on the offensive end when he starts to get in a little bit more of an attack mode. You know how boxing fan, boxing analysts always say the fighter came out in a lather? That's the way they came out against St. Joseph's. They, they were pretty good in that regard today. But now they got to get it up, up to speed. Here's Chalmers back the other way after the air ball. Down low, Cole got it, almost a three-point opportunity. And that's what you want to get out of the defense that we're talking about, a fast break opportunity. Xavier is not a team that wants to play five on five from the three-point line and in. They want to rush it up the floor, get some quick, easy shots in early offense, and they have not been doing that. Sean Miller, the assistant coach, just talking to Chalmers about keeping his elbow in on his shot. His elbow drifting off to the side, and that's when you get these right and left angles. Brandon Cole celebrating his 20th birthday today. 48% free throw shooter. He can tie it up with this one. My son Michael's birthday today. Also, March 13th. Happy birthday, Michael. Happy birthday, Brandon. Yeah, how about that? We're dipping in. 18 Boston. years ago today, I was in this gym from Jacksonville University <laughs> playing Temple in the NCAA tournament We're dipping on this our, very day. Dipping into our Phil Rizzuto bank here. <laughs> and as Cannoli's wife, we're really good. I'll tell you what, speaking of venues, this is also the venue for the opening round game Tuesday in the NCAA tournament. Scores tied for the 10th time. Marshall brings it across. Xavier dropping back into his zone. That Mata, not a zone guy. So still is a sign of weakness. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, it's it's a useful tool as well. It was useful for them last night, and it's been good to him here in the second half. Oh, most the steal by Chalmers. Get it back to Scott. Monty Scott with a big deuce there. 43-41, under 10 to play. Chalmers' gamble is the reason they got that shot. He gambled. Ramad Marshall found the right guy. Scott is a good mid-distance shooter. Some really good picks being set. Finn got inside. Cole attacks. Rolls it home. 43 all. And let him play. Marshall with Iguodala. Scott, Finn, and Jones for Dayton. Dave Cole is a freshman doing a great job replacing Miles, who's a senior in this game. Yeah, Miles been buried here in the second half. Miles... With four for six, got eight points. Jones with a good look. Drifted to the left. Rebound Iguodala. Jones takes the opening. Frank Iguodala looking Frank. The energy guy. No, but Cole, the energy guy for Xavier. And Chalmers was ahead of the play. And then he gets knocked down by Scott. That is championship effort. Amen. Intensity. Championship week presented by 7-Up. Atlantic 10 Tournament Championship. We've got a beauty along with Bob Wenzel and Dave Ryan. I'm Dave Sims. One and one now in effect after that seventh team foul on Dayton.
Nobody has been able to distance themselves from the other team in this game at all. We've seen interesting things in the matchup between Chalmers and Marshall. Of course, Marshall doing much, much better than Chalmers. There is his average. Tell you what. And tonight, not near that. And, of course, he's averaged 21 a game in this tournament. Marshall, on the other hand, has been fairly silent. You've talked about his woes from the field, but playing extremely well in this game. Chalmers is really going to have to do some work to get his 14th straight double-figure game. Misses that free throw, 69% on the season. Leaves the score tied at 43. Timeout called by Dayton. The emotion, everything. Just what you want in a tournament championship game, a full house at full roar tonight here at the University of Dayton Arena. Marshall coming in. Just couldn't find it, 25%. But tonight, Bob, a different story. He's one of those kids, big spot. He comes up large. Well, he does. He's got ice water in his veins. He makes difficult shots, and that's the thing that frustrates other coaches about him. In transition, he's knocking in threes. The take-it-to-the-basket action is what he is the best at, and he's been remarkably well in this game. And this is the most important game of the year, obviously. He's got 15 points already, and he's been fabulous. Game high, 15 points. 12 points for Sato, leading Xavier. Nine points for Dolman. Seven for Diedrich Finn. And for Dayton, 12 points for Sean Finn. And then five for Scott. Four for Wallacekowski, who's been quiet. Two for six. How about Chalmers? Go back to him. One for seven. That's the big difference. Ramad Marshall likes playing against Xavier. He had 21 in their win against Xavier and 16 in the loss. These two teams obviously splitting their regular season matches. Coming up on eight and a half to go here in regulation. Wallacekowski left alone. Shoots a line drive and it's good. He doesn't shoot threes frequently, but he made one like that last night against George Washington as well. 13 out of 53. At 24% now. And a lead of three to go to Sato, guarded by Marshall. Dolman can hit the three. Got touched there, kept alive. Cole Wallaskowski wins the battle. He's the number one rebounder in the Atlantic 10. Up ahead. No! Broken up. Iguodala would have brought the house down with that one. Numbers for Xavier. Finn's going to back it out. Dolman goes by Iguodala. Tough shot. Runner. No. Frank with the rebound. That is an ill-advised shot by Dolman. A fade lefty shot going to his left. Not what you want in this situation. Good look by Williams as Wallaskowski was wide open. Marshall for three. Saved by Chalmers. And then, oh, man, he got clipped there. Who was that, Iguodala? I believe it was. It was. Frank and Beth, the only guy in the floor could get <laughs> man. over that space. <laughs> that, that looked quickly. like a tackle. One and one, in effect. Iguodala, of course, has the brother who plays at Arizona. Andre had a... One of a highlight reel type yeah. family. He had a number one play at, on Sports Center one night in just a sick jam. <laughs> oh my God. They have some elevation in their legs in that family. Wallacekowski, of course, has a brother also playing at Florida State, a prominent role there. And Bennett has a brother, Michael, playing at Ball State. Frank's a senior out of Springfield, Illinois. He'll take a seat. Finn is back in. Chalmers. Missed his last time to the line and misses that one. Boy, I tell you what. I'll tell he you. had three brilliant games in a row, and now just the other way. One for five from the floor. One for five from three. 0 oh for two from the line for three points. Yeah. And, and they're still in the game, which is yeah. good news for Xavier. Wallaskowski down low. Finn. Oh, blocked by Dolman. Look out. As Sato was trying to help him. They're going to get Dolman for the foul, his first. Dolman comes from the weak side right here. The seven-footer going strong. Two guys block his shot, and Sato comes down on his teammate. But Dolman is up. Great weak side and great aggression on the part of the Musketeers on that particular play. Don't forget how poorly Finn shoots at the line. Wide right. You want to foul Finn anytime he gets you in a bad position. Well, that, Your chances are that he's not going to make two for sure. Dad Fed Mata said, hey, man, we're going to shack him tonight. <laughs> exactly. Hack a shack. Hack a Finn. He got one. A standing ovation. 
about that. Been five for 20 here in the tournament and a four-point Dayton lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. And in part by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. We are we are Four-point Dayton lead, 7-20 to go in regulation. Dave Ryan, what do you have for us? Fight being an understatement for Dayton big man Sean Finney certainly struggles when it comes to free throws. A 52% shooter. He said he's tried everything from changing technique, rotation, release point, focusing on different parts of the rim, but not much has worked. The fans in, in Dayton know I was free throw woes, a lot of sarcastic cheers as we saw. And that last possession, he wants to have confidence in a big free throw late in the game. We'll see what happens tonight. Boy, I tell you what, we want to focus on that to see how, if they have to foul, undoubtedly he's going to be the guy that gets mugged. And, of course, they're not going to pass him the ball in clutch situations, <laughs> right. that's for sure. Although he did make two good two good free throws in clutch situations last night. What's, what's your, what has been your standard when you have a kid in a struggle like that? Well, I'll tell you what, you try not to talk about it. You know, yeah. after you do a lot of work, then you try not to talk about it. Big rebound, Sato. Sato fourth in the conference in rebounding. The problem with practicing hard, you know, that's everybody's inclination. Practice hard, practice hard. With free throws, if you're missing all the time and you're out there practicing and missing and missing and missing, it hurts your confidence and it grooves your bad form. Ooh, classic power forward low post play by Miles going glass to make it a two-point game. Well, I've been wondering where Miles is. I thought he was in foul trouble. He's been sitting on the bench. He's yep. been great tonight offensively. He must have done something to make Thad Mata a little bit angry. I heard that because he's got 10 on five for seven shooting. Yeah, absolutely. And he's the best inside guy. There's no doubt about that. 73% from the field in these first three games. Marshall out top. Under six to play. And especially when Chalmers is not going good, you need to go to him more. Warren Williams had to go in and out. Rebound thin. Diedrich brings it down. Brutal three-point night. For Xavier, three of 19 after they came in. They were just scorching people the last three games, 23 of 56. They're only shooting 37% from the field. That is what Brian Gregory's calling card is. Half-court man-to-man defense. Shot clock at 10. Finn being, oh, man, Doman took a blow. He's down. Shot clock at four. Chalmers can't get by Williams. Tough shot. Nothing doing. Great defense. And what do we got? A foul. Oh, man. Warren Williams just picked up his fourth. I thought that was a clean defensive play. So, it's, boy, oh, boy. Well, Thad Mott is sc scratching his head, but right here, he's going to love this play. Shot clock is going down. Nicely challenged. Didn't look like there was any contact at all from our angle. Of course, the officials don't have our angle. Chalmers looking for his first make and finally gets it. 67% at the line. The sign of great teams is when one of your better players does not play well and you still win. Yep. In Xavier's situation, this guy's been carrying them. He's having an off night tonight, but I would not doubt that he would play well in the last four or five minutes of a game like this. Good call. Despite how he's played throughout the entire game. Ties the score for the 12th time. Five minutes left here in the Atlantic 10 Tournament Championship. Dayton, the defending champions, trying to hold serve again on their court. Last year, they knocked off Temple, which is a surprise entry into the championship game. Everybody thought that St. Joseph's would be playing Dayton or Xavier in this championship game, obviously. They are not because of Xavier's great win against the number one team in the country. Five on the shot clock. Tough shot. Dolman easy. They break out. Here's a chance for Xavier to take the lead. Go. Chalmers goes right for it. Offensive foul. Walenskowski sacrificing the body. Chalmers is saying, yeah, I know. I should have shot it earlier. That's what happens when you're not playing a terrific game and up to your standards. You kind of press a little bit. Look at the fall off. Well, they averaged 82 in the first three games. Normally, they're in the 70s. Everything was good in those three games. It was a magical ride, especially the win over St. Joseph's. And they're having to struggle and piece one together here. 
Victor. What you would expect, really, in championship oh. caliber play. Tough, hard-nosed, defensive-oriented game. Absolutely. Third foul, third turnover. Coming up on four minutes to go in the title game. Marshall with Jones, Wallaskowski, Finn, and Bennett for Dayton. Zone defense by Xavier with Finn, Sato, Chalmers, Miles, and Dolman. Marshall in traffic. No. Went for the rebound. Knocked out of bounds. And they're going to say it's going to be Xavier Ball. Tomorrow, Allen Iverson and the Sixers. They're trying to stay alive in the playoff hunt. They'll be taking on the Pistons. Then at 3.30 Eastern, some will see the Spurs face the Kings. Or in a game that was just added to the schedule, the Knicks and the Bucks. NBA Sunday doubleheader beginning at 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 a.m. Pacific on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Two point guards in the game at the same time, Chalmers and Finn. Finn sharing the duties at that spot. Good ball handling is what you need in end game situations. Sato hasn't shot in a while. Here's Finn. Jump stop in the lane. Tough shot. Diedrich Finn. First lead since two minutes in the first half. Jump stop was the key phrase there, Dave. That kept him on balance. Two foot jump stop. Now look at the Xavier zone. Lots of ways to penetrate this zone, either by the dribble or the pass, because they do not have big players. Look at the gaps in the floor. Stolen by Miles. And a foul by Finn. And a good call and a good catch by Frank Scagliata off the ball. That was a fine catch as Chalmers went into almost the second row. Weak side rebounders often fend people away. This is a great double team. Wipeout. Pushes Chalmers up. Lionel saying, geez, what more can go wrong for me today? What? <laughs> well, Diedrich Finn made the last shot to put Thad Mata's club ahead. We'll see if they can maintain right here. That is a prayerful looking coach right here. He's not even looking. He's not even <laughs> looking. First free throw, good. And let me guess, he's the superstitious type, which I know he is. He's going to put his head down again, I guarantee you that. Oh, no he's not even looking now. <laughs> well, like I said, Chalmers is a guy who's going to come up big in end of games, despite the fact of not playing one of his better outings in this one. Consider this in. Chalmers makes that didn't look. Timeout on the floor. Xavier never trailed in this tournament. They trailed 17-04 tonight, but lead by four right now. Hitting UConn, the big guy is back. And back to Okafor, some lunges, some stretches. He was part of a Big East championship two years ago, beating the Panthers on the losing end a year ago. The rubber match, the third meeting. They split during the regular season. Should be a lot of fun, Dave. All right, Mr. Feller, that's going to be a good one. And I tell you what, we are giving them a little momentum going into that Big East championship game. Xavier by four. And let's check in again with Dave Ryan. Dave, Bob spoke of Xavier assistant Sean Miller speaking with Lionel Chalmers about three-point shooting, his release point, and hand adjustment. Guys, this morning at the shoot-around, he was absolutely on target, almost perfect with his three-point shooting. You have to wonder, four games and four nights, are his legs tired during the regular season up to this point? Over a 41% three-point shooter is Chalmers. He's one for five tonight. Is he getting exhausted is the question. Could be. We saw that Dayton drought five and change as we're now under three minutes here in the Atlantic 10 Tournament Championship. Four-point lead, Xavier sitting in that zone, so effective last night against George Washington. Monty Scott, turn around, high bounce around the rim, no good, Finn's got it, Finn goes up, missed it, kept alive. Doman runs it down for Xavier. He's got a man ahead of the pack. And Chalmers with the ball and the lead. They're gonna run some clock. Chalmers did a good job right there. That was a two-bouncer to him over there. You don't want to try to pick a ball like up like that up and make a play. Xavier. Look for Sato, Dave, in this situation, trying to create a little bit. All right, Xavier, 13 of 36, the first 25 minutes, 5 for 10 from the field since. Leading by 4, clock winding down, shot clock at 5. Finn, they get it to Dolman, looks at it, fires it, rainbow shot, high arcing shot, goes up, hits the top, it's going to be Dayton Ball. Boy, that was a big one right there at the 2.06 mark. That's a tough shot for a freshman to take in a situation like that. Normally, that would have been swung to Chalmers. Dave talked about whether it's fatigue with Chalmers. I don't really think it is. I think that, that Dayton has just been so focused on him, and oh, they've yeah. switched out on him. They've challenged every one of his shots. They've just done a good job. And to his credit, he's maintained his poise, hasn't gone crazy ballistic out here. <laughs> We've seen that before, right? He's stayed with it. 
Look at Finn digging in on defense. Williams brings it across. Wallaskowski. The zone has been effective, really, really effective. They haven't made shots from the perimeter, and they've done a good job inside since Miles has been in there rebounding. Thad Mott has got to put it in his book. Marshall, no. Rebound, Sato! Rebound Boy. is right. He was way, way above the rim on that play. Remain Sato with a buck 37 to go. Xavier with the ball up by four. All of the things he does well, Dave, I think rebounding is his best thing. Dolman turns the corner, got inside, gives to Miles, bodies fly. Miles scores, and Xavier leads by six. The biggest lead of the evening for the Musketeers. Atlantic 10 championship action. It is physical. They are letting them play at Thad Mata. And the Xavier Musketeers rejoice with a buck 17 to go. Timeout situation, a 30 and a 60 for Dayton, two 30s and a 60 for Xavier. How about Miles coming to life? Oh, my goodness. At the other end, offensively right here, this is a left-handed 6'9 freshman making this play. And did you see the pump fake by Miles? He got the big guys off of their feet, and I think Diedrich Finn is happy about the turn of events. Xavier at 22 and 10. They've won five straight, 12 of 13. Dayton 24 and 7, one winners of three straight games, five of their last nine. Here's your reset position arrow, favors Xavier. And of those 12 and 13 wins that you talked about, Dave, one was against Cincinnati and one was against St. Joseph. Those are signature wins, no doubt about that. Coming up next, championship week continues. The Big East final from New York City, Madison Square Garden, a third straight year. Connecticut and Pittsburgh will get it on. 8.08 Eastern time is your tip. Last time Dayton scored a point, it was Finn with a free throw at the 7.20 mark. A 10-0 Xavier run, 53-47. Who's gonna take the big shot? Marshall is the likely guy. He took it last possession. Williams steps inside. Williams gets in tight, throws it away. Finn's got it. Kept, kept it alive. Marshall, shot, shot clock continues. 13, we're under a minute to play. Marshall, player of the year last year. Down the lane, and he got fouled by Chalmers. That'll be his fourth. Finn is hurt, limping to the sideline. He has been very energetic for this team. He was almost tackled on that play on the loose ball. All-out dive, trying to get that loose ball when Williams threw it away. So right here, everybody going hard after this ball. You can see how his knee gets knocked under him on that particular play. Great hustle by Marshall to pick that ball up. Finn will stay. Sometimes an initial shock on something like that, Dave, is bad, but then you walk it off a little bit. And that's what he is doing. He is one tough guy. Yes, he is. He did a great job last year when Chalmers was hurt, moved into the starting lineup, and ran the ball club very well. Here's Marshall at the line, 76%, makes the first. Marshall on the evening. That's his first attempt. There have not been a lot of free throw attempts for the Dayton Flyers, just three of nine, while Xavier's 12 out of 15. Well, the laments will come after the game on free throw shooting for whomever loses this, especially if it's Dayton, that is poor performance at the charity strike. Here's Monty Scott going against Finn. Shot clock at 45 seconds in the A-10 title game. And they want a foul on that kind of a situation. Monty Scott was looking over to Brian Gregory and said, should I foul him, coach? Should I foul him? And Brian said, go ahead. When you're this far behind, the clock is your enemy. Xavier is not. Fourth foul on Monty Scott. There's Plenty of time, however, Dave, right here. Lots of things can happen. For Dayton, they haven't had a field goal since the 8.30 mark. Finn at the line, sophomore guard, Newburgh, Indiana, 65%. First is good. Mentally tough player. Shows his emotions on his sleeves. He's been vital tonight because Chalmers has had not such a great game. Finn just left the game, so they got all shooters in there now. Right? And guys who can make free throws in case that eventuality comes to pass. 44-8 on the clock. Xavier, very good from the free throw line. Dayton, not so good in this game. Well, what an afternoon at their eve early evening that they've had. 14 out of 17, while Dayton is 4 out of 10. And the, the talk that you mentioned about them not scoring a field goal in a long time, that is exactly the time where Xavier was using the 2-3 zone. Dayton had a tough time getting good shots, and when they did get good shots, they didn't fall for them. Jim Beheim 
wins a national championship with the 2-3 zone. John Cheney has won everything but a national championship. Now, Thad Mata gets to the championship game with the zone last night and again tonight. You think that's now etched permanently in his playbook? Well, I, yes, and you know what? You, you're right about him. You, you talked about how he likes man-to-man, -man, prefers man-to-man. -man. He thinks going zone is a weakness, but I'll tell you what, when it works, you go with it, and you got to give him a lot of credit of going away from his philosophy a little bit here to get a win and to see what's going well. Now we get the Big East Championship game coming up from Madison Square Garden. Follows our game, and Emeka Okafor will be playing for Connecticut tonight. 8.08 is your tip time. He has an influence on the game whether he's scoring or not. Okafor, the leading shot blocker in the country, the leader of that group. There we go. Williams gets it across. 55-49. The drought. Look at that. Almost eight minutes. Marshall. They close down on him. This zone's working. Jones over the top. Jones can't get a rebound. Sato. Remain Sato with the rebound. Stops the clock with 28-2 to go. And Xavier looking to build on this lead. They're up 55 to 49. Well, Brian Gregory is not happy because his team can't make a shot from the outside. But one thing you need in a zone is strong rebounding defensively. It's hard to block out. So when you have leapers in there like Sato, he is making his impression felt in this game near the end. Xavier won the last meeting on February 21st, 67-60 at the Cintas Center. Dayton won here on January 31st, 74-64. And Finn's got some some blood showing, so they're gonna trainer's gonna Mike Mulcahy working on that. Xavier three turnovers, a season low, and that's a championship game record as Sato rings up the free throw. Coming into this game, Sato was 16 of 17 from the free throw line in the three games. Remain Sato second free throws good. 57-49. Timeout. 28 2 to go. And Dave Ryan, what's going on at your end? Dave, two big free throws from Romain Zotto. He has completely acclimated to the life of the American college student with one glaring exception. He can't st stand the sight of pizza. In fact, he won't even try it. Last night at the team dinner at a local Italian restaurant, coaches pleading with Romain, if we win the A-10 tournament, will you at least try pizza? Romain says no way. He can't bring himself even to try it. He says it looks disgusting. A college kid who doesn't like pizza? I can't believe it. <laughs> they go to the same restaurant. I tell you what, they have not got a serious bill. Hey, you guys in the accounting department back at Xavier, don't worry about it. <laughs> It's been there three straight days. It's been a lot of cha-ching, but look what it may bring you tonight. Well, I'll tell you what. He may not like pizza, but he likes rebounding. He's got nine of them tonight. Possession arrow in favor of Xavier. And this is a big win for their confidence. Not that they don't have confidence. They've been riding high lately. But Sato has carried them on the boards. And with Chalmers not playing up to par and them still being in this position to win this game, that is a fabulous testament to this team. Mar Marshall down low. Rebound, Miles. That should do it. 19 seconds to go. They put the, the freshman... Justin Cage to ride herd on Marshall all the way down so he wouldn't get a good look. And he's Cage bigger than six Finn. Six. Yeah, right. Exactly. He's bigger than Finn. So when Finn went out with the blood, Thad Mata tried to use a bigger guard in there, and that was helpful. Dayton Flyers defending champions here in the Atlantic 10, but Xavier closing in on its third title since 98. Miles knocks down one. They won in 98. Under Skip Prosser in 2002 under Thad Mata. And now Thad is seconds away from his second in three years. And this is their eighth 20-win season in a row, Dave. Phenomenal success for the Musketeers. Thank Sato you. going over to congratulate Wallace Kowski, who just came out of the game. Good sportsmanship on his part. Marshall back the other way, clock winding down. He goes glass, can't get it, tip, no good. Sato, make that thin. Has got it and is going to dribble it out. Xavier closes on a 15-6 run. Three, two, one. The Atlantic 10 champions for 2004, the Xavier Musketeers. What a win. 58-49. to 49. 
And they come away with their third title since 98. Once again, a final score, 58-49, Xavier over Dayton. For Bob Wenzel and our entire crew, I'm Dave Sims. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. What a game here in the Atlantic 10 in Dayton. Xavier comes to Dayton and comes away with a victory as we check in with Chris Fowler in the studio. Dave, thank you. Next up, the Big East at Madison Square Garden, New York.